welcome you guys I'm just going to come over here and turn on the comments so that I can read what you guys are saying I have to turn it on on my phone before it shows up on my laptop so I'm just switching over there right now refreshing because I'm not seeing it there we are clicking in just to get the access to the comments so we can chat all right welcome Josh thank you so much for watching Justin flat earth vegans mark and Doug hello all right so I'm making dinner again tonight I got to get the stuff ready for the dogs Chase was so impatient with me that he started eating his kibble. <laughs> but that's actually a good thing because I want him to eat his kibble. Give him a little bit of rice. So tonight I'm actually going to use, so I make this bag up for the, for the dogs, but I don't uh, try to like dirty it up with dog bowl <laughs> spoons. So I'm actually going to use the rice tonight for my dinner, and I'm going to make uh, fried rice. So, but I gotta get them going first. Chase was very impatient. It's all, it always takes me a little bit of time to uh, get the live video set up, and you know, the tripod and the computer over here, and, and you know, he was squeaking at me, you know, it's past 6.30. <laughs> so I'm a little late with his dinner. that going. I suddenly realize how thirsty I am. I actually got this bottle of water. Oh, you know what's funny? So, uh, I attended this VCon, which means just video convention, and it's for, uh, uh, certification in QuickBooks, advanced certification. And one of the girls goes, uh, so you only see the presenters in these things. And one of the girls was like, oh, there's little quizzes that you have to do throughout the presentation. And so the presenter stops talking for that time and, you know, takes a break, drinks some water. And so when the little quiz came up in, in her section, she goes, okay, I'm going to try to drink really quietly because I know it annoys some. So apparently there's like people that comment on, you know, these people's presentations that <laughs> when they can hear them drinking water, it's annoying. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. So I just commented back, or not back, but I commented on the chat room, just like you guys have your chat here. I commented so many Karens in bookkeeping because <laughs> that's such a, a Karen thing to do. So, you know, something that just suddenly occurs to me is uh, I wonder how international that expression is that, um, like, you're being such a Karen or. Um, it's kind of, I think it's new. I think it's like in the last couple of years. Somebody let me know if that's true. Uh, that, you know, people started making fun of people that complain by calling them Karens. <laughs> so, and apparently the male version is Kyle, but Kyle doesn't strike me as a name of somebody that would be complaining all the time. Yeah, so, uh. So that's, that's what Karens are, you know? <laughs> it's like the default name now for those kind of people. All right, and I will get there. So this grapeseed oil, I put that in. And then I also put in a fish oil pill. And sometimes Pearl eats it, and sometimes Chase will eat it for her. <laughs> so their coat, for their heart, for all sorts of stuff. All right, so I will feed them. Oh, 
All right, let me check the comments because I haven't read through them yet. Let's see. <laughs> Deanna McBride says, my sister is Karen and she is a Karen. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty funny. Karen is the name for a weak snowflake person. I don't think so, Justin. I, I think Karen is one of those complainy, uh, you know, uh, middle age complainy and, um, you know, where's your manager kind. <laughs> okay, let's see. Passing time in Texas. No, this Karen thing is not related to me. I didn't start it. It's it's just something that's picked up speed. So, um, and I think it's only in the last year or so. All right, so I am making fried rice with vegetables. I've got an onion and some eggs. And a yellow squash. Oh man, that's another thing that I've been uh, just off the charts motivated about lately is uh, gardening. I'm, I've never really been into it. I've had some plants, um, but uh, it was never really my thing. But like all of a sudden, I'm like, you know, I joined like 10 gardening groups on Facebook and. Uh, you know, I'm kind of planning some some big pots of what plants I want to mix because there's this thing called companion companion planting, and several plants uh, work better planted together, like um, tomatoes, basil, onion. Uh, you can put those all together, but you'd never want to mix uh, tomatoes with cabbage or tomatoes with um, I can't remember the other, but the other one I wanted, let me see, do I have my list over there? Okay, this, oh yeah, so the one box that I wanted, I'm envisioning this, is going to be arugula, because I eat a lot of arugula, and it's hard to get at the grocery store, they just have like spring mix or arugula and spinach, but it's mostly spinach. So I wanted to get like a, a like a long skinny box of arugula, and then to plant with that uh, for multiple purposes, whether to make it grow better or have more nitrogen or keep bugs off of it. Um, so I was going to uh, probably not all of these, but I made a list. You can do dill with it, but only young dill, not old dill. Um, older dill will actually hinder arugula. Uh, chamomile, which is awesome because I can make tea out of that. Marigold, and I love marigolds. I was so surprised to see that, you know, not a vegetable is really great to plant with a lot of different food, uh, uh, vegetables. Beans go well with those. Rosemary, and then also cucumbers, and I wanted to do that too. So, anyway, I'm, I've got like this list going so spontaneously, I've just in the last couple days, just, uh, I guess no pun intended, blossomed in inspiration for uh, planting. So uh, anyway, oh, Justin Krupa says, uh, this should be a full episode, RV engineered hydroponic setups. Okay, now, oh, I have so many ideas. This is why I really want land, but, um, Something that I wanted to do, and I began the project before I ever went on the road, um, back when I was just doing RV maintenance videos, I was going to make a pump, uh, pump fountain that has plants growing vertically in it. So it would be like a tall thing with, you know, plants around it, and then the pump would pump up the water inside and then sprinkle down on the roots. So uh, that actually might be called hydroponics because it's just water, there's no soil. Anyway, I'm planning to get back to that. I still have the pump. I actually bought it, you know, uh, three or four years ago at this point. So I really want to do that. And um, 
Uh, and I'm going to charge the pump uh, off of my solar panel that I built. <laughs> so, and then I, I just replaced my battery in my RV and the one I took out is pretty darn dead, but I think connected to that solar panel, it'll run the battery enough for a teeny tiny pump, you know? Um, so that's a plan, that's a, uh, that's a video that will be coming in the future. Um, I'm gonna have to uh, find a chop saw before I can do that though. <laughs> so anyway, welcome Ian. Sorry you guys, I have not uh, uh, looked at the comments. I've been kind of chatting. <laughs> Todd says, plant avocado toast. <laughs> I want an avocado tree, that's for sure. Oh yeah, Kevin says, there's a thing called square foot gardening. You can grow a variety of fruits, vegetables in a very small area. One of the Facebook groups I joined is containers and potting or potted uh, vegetables and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm very excited to get back into that. Or not back, but into that. Or I guess uh, one of the things back to would be that uh, pumped uh, vertical garden. Okay, let me let me uh, let me get started. Where is my my cutting thing, cutting board. Corey Allen says, I put down my quantum physics book for you. Oh, that's really nice. That would be, uh, I wish we could tune you in and hear what, what um, topic of quantum physics you're reading about. Let's see. Because our viewers love that. <laughs> oh. All right. Yeah, and uh, I want to, oh, onions are another, I think I said that, any kind of allium or allium, um, onions, garlic, chives, um, shallots, those, those would all be good with tomatoes, but not with the arugula. So kind of the way that I started planning it was to think of what I really wanted. Okay, one, I really wanted tomatoes, and two, I really wanted arugula. And the arugula can be year round, so, um, that's very exciting to me. And then uh, after I kind of planned what I wanted, then I did some research on the com companion planting, on the hashtag companion planting, <laughs> um, to see what else would go well with it and then what I would also want. So onions was one that I, I put in there. It would go with the tomatoes and the basil. So. Jeffrey Ferguson says, well, I actually caught a real live event. Awesome. He says, yeah, me. <laughs> Good evening, Pippi. Good evening, Jeffrey. Welcome. Glad you are here for the live video. Thank you guys for hanging out with me this evening. I'm making dinner. I'm, ha I'm uh, um, doing um, stir fried rice with vegetables and an egg. Oh, uh, Kevin says, uh, first, uh, first live stream that I can actually see your good boys in. Thank you to the refrigerator. So he can see the dogs in the, uh, Scott Howe, thank you so much for, uh, donating. Um, he can see the dogs in the refrigerator. In fact, because I have my little stand, we can take a look down there. Hi guys. <laughs> They're all happy after eating their, their dinner. All right, let me get this moving. I find that for not being a very uh, talkative person, somehow I become very talkative on the live videos. But I mean, it's because there's no one else talking and I, I have to say stuff. You know what? I can see people post up here before it gets here. Let's see. Oh, William Holing says, if you spray the water up under, wait, with under pressure, it is called aeroponics. Okay, so that's interesting. So my uh, tower thing would be engineered in the way that the water would fall uh, down over the roots. So, uh, 
yeah, that's something I'm very excited to do. And in fact, um, there's some good news. I'm very excited that uh, tomorrow I am going in and uh, getting, I don't know, maybe like a kind of slash interview, meet and greet, maybe getting set up to, uh, oh, excuse you, volunteer at, uh, at a campground. So stay uh, tuned for that. I might actually do something live while, while I'm getting it set up or going in there. We'll see. Okay. So let me read these. I have not, I saw a bunch of comments and um, I think people are just saying hi. Um, stuff about Karen. All right, let's just scroll down. <laughs> All right. Uh, Justin says, "What happened to the fix and flip? It's still in. It's still in the works. Um, so, uh, yeah, still doing that. And then I'll also work at the campground, and I'll also do the other stuff. So it's a full schedule, definitely." All right, let's cut this yellow squash. I wonder if you guys can see this. Kevin, thank you so much for donating. Have a beer on me. Don't want you to get parched trying to carry the conversation all by yourself. Thank you so much. That's really nice. In fact, I will have another sip. I am very thirsty today, so hopefully you're not hearing my swallows. <laughs> And it, if you're just tuning in, I was talking about how somebody was complaining, a Karen was complaining about a presenter hearing her swallow water. So I, I was teasing about that. Yeah, very thirsty today. It, I, it was the first time I saw my little gauge. I have an <clears throat> indoor reader on a thermo th thermometer outside and it, it got up to 100 today. <clears throat> Justin, Justin, thank you so much for donating. I really appreciate that. Very generous. I feel like this one didn't fully get, okay, it smells fine. I cut this large part in half. Kevin says, I can think of worse body part functions to listen to. I, I hear ya. I hear ya. Another pun, right? <laughs> well, if you were just on here a few minutes ago, Chase made a weird um, coughing choke sound. <laughs> I don't know if you guys could hear that. All right, let's put the uh, onions in really quick. Richard Logan, welcome. He says he's late for dinner. That's fine. We're making uh, uh, fried rice with vegetables and egg. And I got the onions in the pan right now. This is in the way. Oh, there we go. There. You know what? I'm going to put more onions in there, actually. So I've got the onion going in, and after that, I have a yellow squash. Just going to add a little bit more onion to it. Cooper says, sound like a yawn explosion. Yeah, he does this thing. I don't know if he gets something in the back of his throat, but it's almost like, you know, he's clearing it out. Blah! <laughs> it kind of sounds like that. <laughs> Welcome, Jim. Uh, what's for dinner? It is uh, uh, 
vegetable stir-fried rice with eggs. So I've got the onions going. The dogs have been fed. Let me get a stir thing out. So we'll just stir. So yeah, I just, um, I'm in the midst of filming a, uh, a video on uh, my generate no yeah my generator not working and replacing the battery in the the fifth wheel so having some interesting revelations there so you can stay tuned for that video let's see this that will put tomato so the tomatoes I've noticed when they sit close when they sit close to the cable on my on my uh, electric tea kettle. They, they, they uh, wrinkle up kind of quickly. So I'm hoping that it's all right. <laughs> all right. Wouldn't be very good uh, raw, but it'll be slightly cooked, so. Oh, Kevin says, your kitchen is so much cleaner than mine because of lockdown. It's, it's turning me very lazy. Well, um, uh, if it makes you feel any better, I have to clean up before I ever do a live video. So, I mean, I, I tend to like things very clean, actually. Uh, but I'm not always, you know, always like this clean. Oh, thank you so much, Ray. Let's see, don't use plastic utensils. Oh, you mean over there. That is probably a good idea. These tomatoes are so um, wrinkly from sitting next to that cable that I'm having a hard time cutting them. You know what, I should put this down so that you guys can see. If we put this like a little farther away and then down, ha! Do you guys like that better? Yeah, now you can see what I'm doing. Oh, it's almost cut my head off. Well, I won't be cutting for the whole time, so I'll put it back up. All right, let's see. I am missing some, uh, missing some comments up above. Uh, Jason McMaster says, ever thought of getting a motorcycle scooter when back to travel? Uh, that's a great idea. Um, because you, in that sense, like, especially if you have a, um, well, actually either, if you have a, um, um, trailer or, um, motorhome, some type of motorhome, because you can put it on the back and then if you are in a motorhome, you don't have to tow anything. And if you're in a fifth wheel, you don't have to cruise around in your big truck. Personally, um, it would just, with my dogs, uh, it would have to be a limited, you know, I, I wouldn't use it 100% of the time, right? Because if I'm taking my dogs more, I have to take them in the truck. But I've absolutely, con excuse me, considered that. And I think it's a great idea. Let's see. Oh, okay. Bogdan Vice says, uh, wants me to get wood utensils instead of plastic. I hear you. I'm all for it. All right, for now, we got those a little bit done. We can put the squash in. cook that up. It's already smelling very good. I wish you guys could smell it. It's amazing what just cooked onions, you know, can make things smell really good. Asheville George says you should consider a Berkey water filter. You will never have to buy bottled water again. Yeah, so, um, uh, the, uh, my, uh, my aunt has one and I was interested in one too, because they're, they're supposed to have some really amazing abilities for filtering water like even pond water and stuff like that 
if you ever needed to drink pond water. But um, you know what I used to do, and I and I now I buy it that way. I used I had a water distiller, and now I know there's a bit of a controversy on drinking distilled water. I am fully in the belief and uh, choose with all the information that I have to continue and for years have drinking distilled water. And uh, I used to have my own distiller, and when I got on the road, you know, I can't carry this massive water distiller around so I sold that and now I just buy distilled water uh, in in the gallon jugs yes in plastic but um, so in that sense I uh, I like distilled water better than filtered water uh, Kevin says uh, during your house restoration, do you have an income besides YouTube? Um, I have, I have a, uh, a couple of bookkeeping clients right now. Um, and you really need about like 20 <laughs> to make a, a fair living. Uh, so uh, times are a little tight, but um, I'm really glad to be getting in the, the campground, the, the volunteer job because then I don't have to pay for rent at least. And then um, it's possible the, the paid job at the campground uh, is on hold because of darn frickin' COVID. So, uh, Justin, he says, and like web design still? No, I, I never want to do web design for anybody ever again. Um, it, the, the difference is, one reason why I love bookkeeping and accounting is because it's black and white, it's, it's right and wrong, done or not done. And when it comes to design, uh, that's never the case. And then people always want you to do more or they, they, they're like, oh, I thought you were going to do this or, um, you know, it's called scope creep. <laughs> that's what it's called. So, let's see, can you guys see the pan still? I'm gonna, I don't wanna put this here. Okay, how about that? So, anyway. James Johnson says, I'm going to school for a two year accounting degree. That's awesome, because calling to volume two, I'm not really interested in the degree part, but I've been taking classes, I'll be taking payroll this fall, and uh, I'm working on my advanced certification for QuickBooks Pro Advisor. So I've already got the core certification. So anyway, well, let's see. Somebody said, JB Bloom says, hey Pippi, well I traded my fifth wheel. Awesome, did you get a class A? Or, or was, I remember somebody asking about that. So let's see. Uh, James Johnson says, can you make a decent living with a two-year accounting grade? Um, yeah, actually, uh, before I really, well, actually, I was already taking classes for accounting, but before I started doing the bookkeeping, I thought I had to, like, finish a degree for that. I have another degree, by the way. I thought I had to, you know, finish that, but no, <laughs> you don't. Um, uh, but uh, it's definitely beneficial to get certified by QuickBooks. Um, so you see what you can do. You know, you can still have your own clients and do all the bookkeeping and then pass off taxes to CPA. But I do plan to, long term, is I do plan to uh, do more tax, not more, I haven't started, tax classes and then take the enrolled agent exam with the IRS because then you're certified, you could do taxes like a CPA. So then I can pair that with the bookkeeping and uh, have a, hopefully a good career with that. So that is my plan. Uh oh, here I go with the plastic. Okay, cooking this up. Yeah, since I've been looking at uh, this garden stuff that, you know, just spontaneously got very interested in. Um, I've just been craving like fresh fruits and vegetables. Of course, this isn't, I mean, it's not fresh, but it's cooked, it's fresh cooked, right? 
So, Brian Rose, good plan for sure. Yeah. Okay, so JB Bloom got a class A right on. Are, are you on the road? Is that next question? Where are you at? So. Let's see. Elena Don Francesco, I don't know how to say that for sure, uh, says, do you have any personal goals for the next few years? I don't know when you asked that, but I did kind of just give a few with the, you know, uh, bookkeeping and taxes and stuff. Let's see. Okay, Martin, uh, what we are cooking is uh, we're having some fried rice with vegetables and egg. I've got the onions in and the yellow squash. And we're going for some rice. Some rice in there. All right. So I make this rice for the dogs, and I actually uh, use it uh, pretty often for myself. It's just regular old rice, nothing fancy. And then I put in um, uh, powdered bouillon. Uh, so I do two cups, right? Two cups of rice, four cups of water, and then two uh, teaspoons of the bouillon. And it's, it's you know, slightly flavored, this kind of stuff, you know, just like the powder. And it's great because then I can, you know, like make stir fry with it or I like to eat it when it's fresh, you know, it's warm and uh, they do too. But I, I put it, you know, in a big bag like this and it's like super accessible because I give it to the dogs twice a day. All right. he always got plum sauce when we'd go to those you know like those Mongolian rim or Mongolian uh, cooking things they cook like you go through a line with raw stuff and then they put it on it you know you get a little bowl of food after that um, you know Mongolian grill places and he would always get asked for the plum sauce to be delivered to the table and then they would bring out these like super thin maybe rice kind of like a burrito, but like super thin, thinner than a crepe, and white, like probably rice. And then you put this on that and roll up the food in it, and I just love it. And so I told it this, uh, I don't know how you, hoisin, hoisin, uh, also called plum sauce, reminds me of him, and I love it. So I'm going to make that. Everybody's asked what's cooking. I, I understand you guys that um, on an average, uh, people only stay on the video for like five minutes. So, um, and then, but then there's people that stay on longer. <laughs> so um, it's often asked, you know, I, I sometimes have to repeat myself and I feel bad for the people who are already on the video. But anyway, I'm making uh, fried rice with vegetables and egg. And I've got so far, um, onion and uh, yellow squash and I got the rice all in the frying pan right now and I'm still planning to add tomato and egg around yeah so like I said it's really nice to have um, rice already made
let's see. Oh, on LI. I'm not sure what that means. But then they returned to Shanghai. Huh. <laughs> Jason McMaster says, I don't cook anything unless it says rotate after six minutes. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, Kevin, he says, maybe you can scroll the menu across the bottom of your videos continuously. I don't know what that means. What, 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 uh, what is the menu? Oh, Long Island, okay. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, uh, so somebody says, what is my go-to cooking oil? And, um, well, I, because I have uh, grape, uh, what's it called? Here, let me turn this more here. Because I have grapeseed oil for the dogs, I use that. It does have a high, um, a high temperature point before it breaks down. So not as high, excuse me, as like canola or vegetable oil, but um, it's still very high. So uh, it's, it's safe for cooking pot, you know. And I have it, so that's really what I use. Yeah, I would not cook with olive oil. It basically breaks down and becomes carcinogenic at a very low temperature, so you're losing any kind of benefit of it. But I am a huge olive oil fan, and uh, so much so that I usually have multiple olive oils like this one. Really nice olive. Oops, I'm showing it the wrong side. I keep thinking the cam the camera's on the other side. Um, anyway, I'm a very big olive oil aficionado. Alright, let's, what are we putting in? A tomato. We'll put that in. And then, um, I got sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Let me make the egg. I do that in a separate one, so I'll just do that really quick. Oh, I was gonna put this in too. I sh oh shoot, I should have put this before the uh, the this before the tomatoes. I can put that in right now. All right. Now, what do you guys think? You know when uh, one burner doesn't work? Does anybody have any any recommendations for why that? I haven't tried to troubleshoot it or anything, but I do have one video um, that uh, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not listening to what I'm talking about because I'm like reading this at the same time. So uh, if you have any idea why. Uh, a burner wouldn't work. I'd love to hear it. Turn this down. Turn this one. It looks probably okay. That. I'll put this in right before the egg. And I've got eggs out. Alright. Possible clog. Yep. Somebody says, wash your hands after sneezing. <laughs> because I might get what was in my mouth back in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, Jason McMaster says, do you smell gas from that burner? That's actually a really great question. And I don't know. I haven't tried to troubleshoot it. But um, really great question, right? If there's gas, then maybe the sparker's not sparking. And if there's no gas, then it's just clogged. Great assessment of that. James Johnson says, you put salad greens in your fried rice. Yes. Yes, it's very nice. It'll actually wilt a little bit. Um, I probably wouldn't normally put, like, um, you know, romaine or whatever this is. But uh, normally I would have uh, arugula, like I talked about earlier in the video by chance. 
and uh, or maybe spinach or something and I cook that down but this is a mix but um, so it'll be fine but I like to have you know the different texture and just something else going on in there let's see if this is ready put my eggs in running of what you're cooking so that no matter when somebody joined they would be able to tell what you're cooking that is an incredible idea and now Kevin is that something I can automatically add because this is a live video but that is a great idea um, <laughs> somebody says sneeze into your elbow because I might give myself the Rona <laughs> Disease might come out of my mouth and then I might put it back in. <laughs> uh, it's all right. Uh, Kimberly Likes says, why are you not having a glass of wine or did I miss that earlier? You know, I just never buy that. Uh, I definitely will have a glass of wine or a cocktail or even beer, but I just don't buy it. Um, I do actually happen to have some alcohol right now. Now, I am not a, uh, I'm an olive oil connoisseur, but I am not a wine person. My neighbor gave me this, um, like, weeks ago at this point, and I don't know if it's still good, but I have that. I don't, I don't know if I, uh, I don't know if I feel like, I'm so thirsty right now. Let's see. How's the house renovation going, Fair Rider says. Um, it's going great. It's moving along. I've got a video coming up to update you guys on that soon. Um, Justin Krupa, coffee girl, but not a wino. Actually, I, I'm a tea girl. I drink a lot of tea. What? <laughs> I know that might look like a lot of salad, but it cooks down quite a bit, so it'll just be like little pieces in there. element. Oh, you guys can't see. Oh, maybe you can't see. Okay. Let's turn that out of the way. All right. That is ready. Now we just need that to wilt down. I'll put some of the warm stuff on top of it. just tuning in I've made some uh, fried rice with vegetables and I got egg to go on at the last minute I'm just trying to wilt some of the veg the greens first because I've got it on a low right now because everything's pretty much cooked but I forgot to add those in on time all right 
Let's see. Hey, Big Al, welcome. We're have I just told you we're having uh, fried rice with veggies. Looks like rabbit food. <laughs> yeah, I guess it could be. Oh yeah, a walk. I don't have a walk, but of course that might be easier. Let's see. Cherie, Cherie Bloom says, how are the dogs doing? The dogs are doing very good. I'll show you guys again in case you didn't see earlier, but they're here chilling after their din din, enjoying life in the AC. They played in the pool. They played in the water today. They ran a little bit at the house in the backyard and uh, now I'm pretty tired. All right, this is beginning to wilt a little bit. Yeah, Brian Rose is glad the AC is still going strong. Oh, yeah. Okay, you, let's see. <laughs> the picture on the camera looks different, so I was a little startled. But that's because I uh, I guess it's moved closer. Um, AC's doing great, thankfully. I was having some trouble with it. I had to replace some parts. So if, you're in, if you've got problems with your AC, specifically if you hear like there's broken stuff in there, uh, definitely watch that video. It was just a few weeks ago. And... Uh, very likely you need to replace one of your fans uh, probably the fan the most inner inner fan so check out that video and um, hopefully your AC is fine <laughs> let's see uh, Scott Briggs says does the AR does the RV have a huge central AC no there's two there's uh, two on the roof and they do come down and have their own uh, uh, centralization of, I, well, I guess you might call that centralized AC, but it does have its uh, duct work to go throughout, you know, the different vents in the RV. So maybe that is called <laughs> centralized AC, I'm not sure, but it's two big units that look like most RV air conditioners on the roof. All right, let me see this. Because I know some of you are skeptical on the leafy greens. <laughs> but trust me, it's very tasty, at least for my taste. And I'm going to put this in now. Turn the heat off and get a bowl. I have a get a bowl. All right. There we go. This is what it looks like. Y Oops, this side. Yum. Leafy greens look good in there, right? I know, you're skeptical. This is a dog, so I'm not going to use that one. And then, if, it, if you can always add a, a little more of the plum sauce. Just a little bit. Yeah, bigger pan. Well, you know what? <laughs> In an RV, you're somewhat limited on pans and stuff like that, so. Mmm, very, very good.
Carrie Williams, is that a veggie dish? Well, there's egg in it, but otherwise, yeah. I, I'm a meat eater and, you know, also even a drinker like we're talking about alcohol. But I, but I more generally would not eat meat or totally be fine with no meat and no alcohol. But I'm totally not, again, I absolutely eat and drink that myself. Big Al says, what's my star sign? Pisces. Actually, Big Al, aren't you into, uh, do you do some readings or stuff, something like that? Because you had mentioned like tarot or something at another point. Boiled eggs boost metabolism. That's pretty cool. I actually, I really, I eat a lot of boiled eggs every morning and uh, sometimes a couple throughout the day as well. Mm. Kevin says, made breakfast kind of what, I look, what, what it looked like this. But it was spiced ham and spinach that you cooked down and then a semi-cooked egg in the center all on top of an English muffin. That sounds pretty good. Sorry, I'm tr trying to keep up on the comments, but um, I'm not. <laughs> Oh wow, 12 eggs in one sitting all, all the time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Scrambled eggs on English muffin. Yeah, I love English muffins. I put butter and jam, or butter and, uh, you know what I really love is uh, lemon, um, what's that called? Lemon curd. Oh, I love this stuff. You can, you, um, I used to get Trader Joe's. It had a little bit different color, but this is what they have at the regular store. Lemon curd. Yum. Yeah, I, I actually have English muffins almost every morning. You guys are making me hungry and I'm eating right now. <laughs> That's actually very good. <laughs> Ian's now hungry and he has to go to the grocery store. <laughs> That's the worst feeling is when you're hungry but you don't have anything and you have to go shopping to get it. Talk for Alt says, how do you keep your hard boiled eggshell from sticking to the white? Really good question. Don't overcook it. So when you have your water ready to, when you have the water cold and it's in a pot, put the eggs in there in the cold water. When it begins to boil, don't turn it on high to boil, but like medium high. When it boils, uh, turn it down to the smallest temperature that it continues to boil and then set an alarm for eight minutes of boil time. When it's done, take, dump out the hot water and then rinse it with cold water to cool the eggs off so they don't keep cooking. And they and they'll uh, very likely they'll never stick that way. What is the Gordon Ramsay boiled egg method? <laughs> Matt says, "Have you gone to visit your brother yet?" All of a sudden, I feel like your mom. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, I've actually been missing my nephews. Um, so I, I've had that in my mind to do at some point coming up.
you know what? I learned so much from you guys. <laughs> um, there's all sorts of uh, egg uh, egg tips on right now. And uh, what were we talking about earlier? Uh, troubleshooting <laughs> this. Uh, there was something else even. But you guys are full of great information. You gotta be careful who you trust though when you read comments because <laughs> sometimes there's trolls who just put out random stuff. Um, Big Al says, uh, bring water to boil, put in eggs for three minutes, remove from the stove, um, place a lid on the pan for five minutes, perfect egg every time. Now I'm wondering if that is a soft boiled egg because for the same method that I did but for three minutes makes a soft boiled egg. South Bay Technology Gurus, thank you so much for contributing to the channel, I really appreciate that. How do you get your internet? My phone! <laughs> um, or the campground has it. So, uh, yeah, for, for years I've relied on my phone's hotspot. <clears throat> and when I'm at places, um, sometimes it, you know, it's kind of a downer at some points if you're for a long, you know, like a few weeks at a place that has no internet at their, at the campground because <laughs> you can't watch like Netflix at night or, um, you know, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, all of my uh, internet is over my phone's hotspot, mostly. Right now, the campground has it. So I'm actually using the internet on my computer. And then uh, um, uh, data on the phone. Steve Yu, he says, what sort of work are you doing these days? <laughs> I kind of went over that earlier in the video, and I, I, I've had to repeat a lot of things lately, so um, maybe I'll just say at the end of this video, <laughs> rewind and watch that. Wayne Mills says, are you looking forward to Starlink Network going public? I have no idea what that is, <laughs> sorry. Oh, I know what it is. I'm guessing that's the uh, Tesla thing. Now, I don't know what the, I don't know what, I don't know what it touts, what his marketing, marketing material says. <laughs> yeah, Big L has a good point. If we want to keep talking about boiling eggs if you peel them while they're warm it's much easier to get the skins off uh, Kimberly likes this I put soy sauce in no I put in plum sauce it's also called hoisin or hoisin or something sauce and I had a little story about it earlier it reminds me of my dad seen you on a live one for a while or were you on last one maybe yeah now here's a question can if you come in late to the video like I think we've been going for 58 minutes that's what it says can you watch the beginning or do you have to watch I think you have to watch now and then when it's done go to the beginning right so well anyway we are coming up on um, an hour Jason McMaster says hoison. Got it. Hoison sauce. I, I was just saying it like that because I've actually studied a lot of languages and um, Mandarin for two years in college. And um, it doesn't look <laughs> like it would be pronounced that way. 
so uh, that's why I, I don't know it's kind of a weird spelling pinging spelling of it awesome James he says he's been uh, listening while working listen what are you working what are you doing what do you do Yeah, that Starlink internet might be interesting. Somebody says, uh, internet anywhere in the U.S. with just a small antenna, even remote boondocking. Well, we'll see how good of internet it is. I've, I've been on uh, satellite internet before, and it's, it's kind of terrible. But it still works. says, what is your favorite top Chinese dish? All right, so here we go. Now remember, I've been to China twice and um, stayed for several weeks each time. And um, so I've had a lot of Chinese food <laughs> in China. It's completely different than here. It's, okay, in, in the north part of China, near North Korea, near... Uh, you know, pretty darn north. That's where I've been. The food there is is a hundred percent different than here. It's basically kind of like this. They just put different vegetables together, and then you know, rice or fish would be separate. And um, but in the town that I was in, very small town. You know, um, people. Most people have never seen white people there. You know, like that small and rural or remote. It wasn't quite rural, but um, remote. Um, they would, that's the kind of food that they would eat. <clears throat> and all of them, all the restaurants, everybody, got their vegetables from the mountain range near there. So they literally go out and get food in the mountains right there. Just amazing. And um, I love anything with uh, mushrooms. Wayne, thank you so much for vol er, volunteering. <laughs> Uh, donating thank you so much so I love anything with mushrooms but I ate so much food there because it's kind of a it's a cultural thing to to make the guest eat and eat and eat and drink and drink and eat and drink and um, in fact uh, they they kind of you're never supposed to take a sip of alcohol alone you always do it with somebody and because you're the guest everybody you know it's like it'll you know, you'll be at a table with like 30 people or 10 people or whatever and they'll like catch your eye and you know they'll so you'll drink together right and then the next one will do it so as the guest you're drinking a lot I drank so much that I well maybe a combination of things but I got pneumonia I had pneumonia really bad when I got back um, and then it reoccurred you know uh, not long after that so, uh, <laughs> what was my point? They were talking about Chinese food, and anyway, the food there is just very different, and I would eat so much, but because it's like so healthy, I actually lost weight, of course. It could be because I had pneumonia, um, but I, that didn't really start taking effect until a few days before I left. And I was there for weeks. Takfra Alt says, when in Thailand, I thought the food there was what Chinese food in America should taste like. That's interesting. I love Thai food. Um, at least American Thai food, because <laughs> I've never been to Thailand. But I love all the coconut, um, you know, creamy stuff. Jason McMaster says, please gotta say a little something in Mandarin you gotcha <laughs> you betcha okay <clears throat> there is a poet there as famous as Shakespeare you know in maybe the Western world or at least in the US uh, maybe even more famous because everybody memorizes uh, several of his poems and um, particularly this one so I was taught 
very <laughs> stringently how to pronounce everything and there's uh, amazing so there's four tones in Chinese there's up down down up and uh, uh, flat flat actually comes first um, so there this particular poem is like so special in so many ways so many layers um, that that's why it's so famous okay so here we go <clears throat> okay I'm so hopefully I can remember it it's called uh, Jin Ye Si by Li Bai. Chuang Chen Ming Yue Guang, Yi Shi Di Shang Shuang, Ju Tou Wang Ming Yue, Di Tou Si Gu Xiang. So that's it. <laughs> that was pretty good. On the spot, no practicing. So. And when I say that in front of Chinese people, they're probably being nice, but um, they're actually very impressed because uh, I was drilled in to practice the right tones. <laughs> Scott Briggs says, I challenge your master. <laughs> Are you guys interested in seeing um, the dogs eat some peanuts? because I'm going to give them some peanuts as a snack. Let me drink some water. Pippi san. <laughs> hmm. Actually, first, let me tell you what that poem means, kind of translates to. And remember again that there's so many layers that a translation will never touch on. So, when I translate the idea or the meaning it almost you know in English it's like well what the heck why is that famous uh, it means uh, um, it's so uh, their biggest holiday and now I could be getting this wrong is in August okay I could be totally wrong it's a like a moon holiday Full moon. I can't. Sorry, guys. I think I think it's the full moon festival, and they have like moon pies or like uh, little things filled with beans and stuff. Sweet bean paste. Anyway, I uh, that holiday is like Christmas in the U.S., where everybody goes home to their family, and so the person speaking in the uh, poem is alone for that holiday, which is rare, right? So he's missing home. And he sees the moonlight come through the panes of glass and it looks like ice on the pane with the moonlight coming through and the moonlight goes on to the ground and he looks at that and then he looks up at the moon and contemplates his hometown. <laughs> so that's that po that's what that means. But uh, like seven layers of complexity and meaning, tones, it's just a, you know, big thing there. So, uh, Frisco, you're in Kuwait, amazing. Okay, so I'm going, if you guys are interested, or if you're not, <laughs> just tune out. I'm gonna give the dogs some peanuts. And I was giving them some peanuts earlier and it was just so darn cute. Um, Cause they'll like eat one at a time, you know, so. I'm dirty, my legs have dirt all over them, so I don't know. I'm gonna put the camera down and um, we'll go like this. Let's see. I'm gonna need to do this a little bit. Sorry, hang tight. Who took their Dramamine? Did you take your Dramamine? All right. Who's gonna get peanuts? Who wants some peanut snackies? Maybe we like a peanut snackie. Yes. Who likes peanuts? So just an FYI, this is your closing segment. 
Credits rolling, imagine the credits rolling. <laughs> oh, you can't see Chase's face, so there it is. There we go. Right here. <laughs> Notice how they remain very lazy. Maximum energy saving. But they love their dry roasted peanuts. those bird things and you got like the little bird stuff and they take little worms or whatever they are from you. Maximum energy conservation. All right. Credits roll and I say thank you guys for watching and for joining us and uh, uh, for hanging out and chatting about moon pies and Karens and uh, all the other random stuff we talked about today. So um, I will bid you farewell and have a very good evening.